Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we are taking a look at Masterpiece MP51RC. And I'm really, I, I don't even know where to begin with this. Uh, first off, you know some of you doing starting off in robot mode instead of vehicle mode. That's only because how much I love this figure. Um, it's fantastic. It, this is so much fun to play with and just finding out how she works and how she interacts is a lot of fun. But um, first off, if you haven't already, please subscribe down below. Uh, I look forward to any comments that you have about these reviews. Uh, don't forget, for those of you who do subscribe, I have a stupid little gag going on for the Evil Lynn uh, review I did the other day. Uh, that's only going to be open for a few more days. If I don't hit the minimum, I'm not going to bother doing it. But let's talk about this figure. Um... <coughs> Right off the bat, right off the bat, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room. And that is the fanboy complaints that I've been seeing about this figure. The cartoon accuracy one, I can kind of understand. She's not 100% cartoon accurate. Fuck cartoon accuracy. I'm looking for updates on initial figures. And since RC's first official non Bacon exclusive figure is only a few years old, they can't really do much to update on. And I'm not really a big fan of cartoon accuracy. I could take it or leave it. And obviously these backpacks on these Masterpiece figures are not cartoon accurate at whatsoever. <coughs> Go back, look at my Sunstreaker or my Spin Out reviews. Or even my Hot Rod or even my upcoming Ultra Magnus review. But that's beside the point. Uh, the other thing that fanboys are bitching about is her robot chest. To them, I have this to say, it's a robot toy of an alien. Fuck breasts, okay? I, I, I just don't get the obsession. I, I know, granted, I am male, but, I mean, if you remember back in my Black Arachnid review, I went on a tangent about how stupid it is that she has tits. And same with this. These are supposed to be alien life forms disguising themselves on Earth and trying to emulate the vehicles and somewhat of a hum humanoid look to them. It's going to look off, it's going to look different. And that's one of the things that I both liked and disliked about the Bayformers, is how they were alien looking, but <laughs> at least with Masterpiece and regular Transformers, you can make out what their facial features are supposed to be. Again, I do apologize about the cough. It is still spring here in Florida, and I'm asthmatic, so yay. Let's go ahead and just pull her in here just a little bit. Take a look at that beautiful head sculpt, and it is beautiful. It looks very well done. Um, granted, again, she doesn't have a cartoon-accurate head, but again, I don't care. I do think it's fantastic. It is a very, very fun update on her design. And it is reminiscent of her. Uh, she does come with a bunch of accessories, of course, and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's just, like I said, let's go ahead and take a look here. To switch out the faces, and she does have several faces that you can use, um, this piece here does pop up, and then you can slide out the face. Another cool thing is the face, if you slide it back a row, you can bring out her goggles. And I do think it makes a very, very nice look. And I'll show that off just more in a little bit um, with it. But first, I just want to show off the articulation and design. So we're going to go ahead and just take a look. Again, she comes with a shit ton of accessories for Masterpiece figure. And I'm really, really enjoying it. <coughs> but let's go ahead and talk about RC and who she is first. Go ahead, sweetie. Stand. I said stand. I've seen a lot of people in the different forums I belong to put her in a lot of really, really cool positions. I'm having trouble getting her to balance. So, so it's just me, I'm hoping. I'm hoping the rest of you have a lot of fun with this. But There we go. So who RC is? Uh, for those of us who grew up with the original cartoon, and the second season, they introduced the concept of female Transformers, a bunch of characters that appeared once, and they were done. Then the 86 movie came out, 
and season three of the cartoon came out, and there was R.C., and R.C. was one of the main characters of that third season. And unlike a lot of other <coughs> Transformers, they actually tried to flesh her out a little bit. Um, not much. She didn't have that much of deep backstory. The only characters that really, really were fleshed out in the original cartoon were uh, Starscream, the Aerial Bots, and like Omega Supreme. The rest of them didn't really have these really cool origin stories. And same with her. In the Marvel Comics in the UK version, she's introduced as a way for Transformers to try to get females to like her. It backfires. Whatever. And then over the years, the different other toy lines have included female characters, including other characters named R.C. Usually, she's just a female Transformer. IDW Comics, of course, made her absolutely fucking badass and nuts, and I won't even begin to describe the complicated storyline that she had in those in that original IDW universe. <coughs> but, <clears throat> as such, unlike a lot of other characters out there, she never really did much or caused a lot of controversy. She was just a female Transformer. Um, much like Lady J in G.I. Joe was a female G.I. Joe. She was there. They didn't make a big deal about it. It was just cool. It's not like Smurfette who had to have this whole origin story and introduction and she's virtually a villainess and they skip a lot of tropes and just have her be a soldier and a hero. Granted they did try to do some like love triangle between her, Hot Rod, and a Springer, but it wasn't really important to the storyline. What this did do a disservice to her was the Japanese Headmasters cartoon where she got regulated being a secretary and just a love interest and she got rather boring. Um, and we're going to take a look at that because we're going to take a look now at the box and just show you some of the stuff that they have on there. So we're going to take her off. Of course, the regular black box here is just a black box. Oops. But let's go ahead and take a look at this box. As you can see, it's got some beautiful artwork. It's got that on the top, a bunch of stuff on there, and stupid feminine poses for the figure. Of course, the vehicle mode. And if we take a look here in the back, again, they're Japanese overemphasizing the fact that she's female. It's headmaster's bullshit all over again. That being said, she is still pretty fucking badass. Again, if you look up some of the poses that some of these other people have been able to do online... She is fantastic and has a lot of posability. And we're going to take a look at that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this gun, and we'll talk about the guns here in a second. Uh, the one thing I am really worried about is she does have really thin figures, uh, fingers, rather. And I'm worried because my, like my animated RC's fingers eventually broke. I know my buddy Brian, his Thrilling 30's RC's finger broke, so I am really worried about these fingers. They are very slight thin. But this is standard articulation for the masterpiece. Three fingers are on one thing, another finger here is on its own, and then the thumb can do open and shut so you can have him have her hold the gun. Head is on a ball joint. You know what that means. But we're gonna start here and go up for the rest. Feet. Because of the way the feet are designed, she does have toes that go up and down. She does have t ankle tilt. Feet can go forward. They can go back. Knee articulation. It's got a lovely double jointed knee here. Thigh rotation. These are really, really tight. I actually wasn't sure if they even moved, but they do. Um, leg rotation. She can only go back about that far. It's not far at all. Forward. And you can hear that wonderful ratchet there. She can kick out pretty far. She can't do the full split unless you pop up the hip like this one just popped out. She can do the regular split, the, the forward-backward split. And this is one of the things here. Everything on this figure is tight. So once things pop out, they, uh, they don't want to go back in unless you force them in. But to get her to do the splits, you can pop out the hip joints. Of course, when you try to do it on video, it doesn't want to work. But as you can see, I'll just show you on this one here. Because of how it's designed, 
It does give her a little bit more range of motion, and that popped that back in good. Uh, waist is on a ball joint. She can't go that far with it, but she can look up. She can look down. Fingers we showed you. Of course, she does get wrist rotation. She does get a lovely elbow joint, which can go all the way forward. She can't go back with it. She does get mid-arm rotation, shoulder rotation, and then she does get extra muscle here. I don't know why I said muscle, but she does get an extra rotation there so she can hold her guns in more dynamic poses. Other than that, that is the extent of her, her articulation, but it is really a lot of fun articulation. It does allow you to get some really cool poses with her. Again, Google some of those people and see what they've done with her posability. As far as accessories go, uh, she, of course, comes with the standard Masterpiece instruction booklet. She does come with a very lovely card that features artwork featuring her. You've already seen the sniper rifle. This gun that can store in this holster. She also has a small little handgun. Blaster effects that I will never use. For each one for a different gun. This gets used in vehicle mode, and I'll show it off here in a little bit. And then she comes with three additional faces. Who pretty much all just look the same. Maybe the eyes are a little bit different. Oops. And like I said earlier, when you, she does come with that little goggle piece in here as well. So what you do again is you just pull up on her helmet, you slide out the face in question, and you can see how there's a couple different ridges in there. You slide this into the back one. Like I said slide, slide in, slide in, and then... You get somebody with a lot smaller fingers than I do to flip out these goggles. Hold on one second. And then you get these cool little goggles. The visor that she uses once in the movie and I don't think ever uses again. Um, honestly, I like this proportion better. I think that makes the face look better. Um, even if you put the visor back in, it looks better from the front, unless you actually like pay attention and look up close. As you can see, there's that gap. It's more noticeable. You see that. So unfortunately, yeah, you have to slide the face in and out, even though I do think it looks better closer to the Leia head buns. But I am very impressed. Like I said, this is a fantastic figure. Um, I, I really don't get the hate for the figure I've been seeing online. This is this is a great masterpiece figure. And it's doing something different. It's not just sticking to cartoon accuracy. It's trying to update and homage <coughs> the cartoon while making it a little bit of herself. And just for a quick size comparison, here she is with Hot Rod. So they are about the same height. Um, Hot Mike might be a little bit taller. But she definitely has a lot more to her as far as articulation and posability. And she does definitely stand out. And I am really, really digging her. So what we're going to do... Uh, oh, we're going to talk about how she compares to other RCs. My animated RC, unfortunately, is in storage. Uh, the fingers broke off a long time ago. So she's in cold storage until I get some good glue um, to try to fix her. But... Not really important. The She is kind of homage with the length of the neck, perhaps. But <laughs> here she is with the Thrilling 30 RC. And this is the one that... I think it was MGO, but it could have been Prime versus Prime. Who talked about how he feels that this masterpiece is just an upscaled version of her. 
I can see what he's talking about, but at the same time, it's apples and oranges. It's it's like comparing Earthrise Optimus to Escape Mode Optimus. It's different versions of a character, um, different price points. And here she is with Cyberverse. Just to show you, I mean, she's the standard RC look with the uh, prongs, the Princess Leia helmet. And again, she's just a fantastic toy. So right now we're going to hit stop. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, Transformer, come back, and I'll talk to you about the vehicle mode and the one complaint I have with vehicle mode. So we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I have her in her vehicle mode with all of her accessories attached. Um, her vehicle mode is some sort of futuristic sports car. I like to think of it as a pink Cadillac, but then I started uh, singing the damn song, so we're not going to do that. I promise. So let's go ahead and take a look. Again, she has all of her accessories attached at the moment other than her blast effects and her additional faces. I wish there was a way to store the additional faces like there is on Ultra Magnus, and I think B does it as well, but I could be wrong on that. So let's go ahead and take a look here real fast. Now, she is very slick. Very, very slim. Um, she's not perfect. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, talk to you about that in a second here. Um, obviously, I don't have her perfectly transformed. She is a shell former, as you can probably tell with that backpack. You have to fold out the entire shell, put it over the body. And again, she comes with all these ridiculous <laughs> accessories. Um, really, it's three guns and this... Uh, I don't know what the hell you call it. Weird spinning thing of doom that she uses once in the movie and it's never seen to it from again. But, as you can see, it is very nicely done. Uh, the seats here are very nice. The windshield, um, this is a very difficult part to transform in both parts. It's very reminiscent of Alternator Scrimlock where you have to do everything perfectly at the right angle. Except I didn't throw this one and try to break it. Um, Beautiful painted details in there. Now, Daniel does not fit, um, just so you know that. Really, no one would fit. There's no leg room. But let's go ahead and take a look on the underside here. And I do have her slightly mistransformed, and I know that. The problem with her is the hands. No matter where you put the hands, they kind of get in the way. Um, I try to keep them usually flush along her legs here. Um, and I Again, make me nervous about the thumbs. Oops. And of course, being masterpiece, the guns don't like to stay on. But as you can see, she does roll. This is just catching a little bit here on the hands. And it's just a matter of fidgeting and finding the right angle. Otherwise, it's really, really well done. Um, you can see here that this hook thing just hooks in over here on the tab. This, this gun here. Just tabs into these slots here, and she does have another gun stored away in here that I didn't show off in robot mode because really it's annoying and I don't really dig it. So let's go ahead and move these pieces out of the way and just show her off the part, the part that I'm really, really nervous about, this piece. The piece that has the Autobot symbol here. This whole piece pops off. Um, it's not very secure. You fidget with it just a little bit in either mode and it pops out. And on top of that, this piece is supposed to twist all the way around, and it doesn't. So, it is what it is. Otherwise, this is a fantastic, fantastic update on her original cartoon mode vehicle. It looks great. Um, again, you can see her whole body underneath, but that's pretty standard these days for most shell formers. And the only real complaint I have is just that one piece. And minor complaint is getting it so that she's even here. And that's just going to be me fidgeting around, trying to put those arms in the perfect spot. And I've yet to find the perfect spot. But as you can see, she is quite beautiful. Oh, might as well take that accessory off too. Why they have the holster there without the gun, I, I don't know. I just don't know. But it is what it is. Um, again, I really do like this figure. I think it's probably one of the better Masterpiece figures that I own. Granted, I don't own that many. Actually, I haven't been let down with any of the Masterpiece figures that I have. Um, I think they're really, really fun and challenging. Um, with the exception of the G2B, which is really, really fucking easy. 
and that's about it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it is what it is. If you're looking for cartoon accuracy, the vehicle mode, you're going to get it. The robot mode, not so much, but what they lack in the robotic mode accuracy more than makes up for with just how much posability it has and how well it looks. And again, the major complaint I'm seeing online from the simps out there is her fucking tits. And if you're that upset about a robot pair of breasts, then you probably need therapy. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm making fun of you guys a lot, but it is stupid. They're robots. At least she's not a robotic spider. There's so many things wrong with that one. But, yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, let me go ahead and we will show you comparisons with her, the other RC type. Alright, so let's go ahead and compare her to the other RCs I have out here. Um, <coughs> we're going to start off with the Thrilling 30. As you can see, the Thrilling 30 is much more simplified design. I really do love this figure, as you saw with the uh, Nightbird review last week. But just to show you, I mean, they are supposed to be the same vehicle, just, you know, different toy line, different amount of money they can put into it. You can see how similar they are with the transformation. She even holds on to her weapons underneath as well. <coughs> and next we'll bring in the Cyberverse figure. The Cyberverse figure, of course, is sort of like off-road vehicle, but she still is basic RC aesthetic, just with a roof. Um, but overall, again, I really do like this figure. Um, if you are a Masterpiece collector, this is definitely one you need to get, um, even if you bitch and moan about it. The only thing I really wish that it came with, and this is just me, um, and it's because I'm an IDW nerd, I wish she came with a pair of swords. Um, I know that's what they did with Animated and, of course, with Thrilling 30 here. And she never used swords in the cartoon, but one of the cool things with the older Masterpiece figures is we got a lot of figures that were not cartoon accurate. They had Grimlock wearing his crown from the comics, or I have the G2 Sideswipe, or even the G2B. There was a lot more goofiness to them, and they had a lot of more features that homage other versions of the characters, and I really wish that was something we got with this. I'm not complaining, mind you. Not one bit. I do really dig this figure. Um, if they ever do or do repaint or retool, I hope she comes with some swords. Or maybe there's a third party out there that'll make some swords for her. Other than that, uh, please comment down below. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like, and that's it. This is my last figure for Women's Month, um, starting... In a couple days here, I will be going back to random things that I have. This entire month of March here, for the past, well, for the last two and a half weeks of March, I've been trying to just do exclusively female characters. Um, my next review, I believe, is going to be the House of X Magneto figure. So do keep an eye on on that. Thank you very much for watching. Again, thank you. Uh, my Evil Lynn video. Uh, I've only gotten one comment. And if I told people if I got five, I'd read that stupid, horrible little mini comic is one of these reviews. So, some incentive for you. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day.